Hi everyone, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We're Anu and Igor. We're the owners and founders of Vina Servery Wine Merchant based out of Walnut Creek, California. And you're watching the show for the adventurous wine drinker. So um, today, what are we tasting? We're taking a sparkling wine from uh, Vouvray, a sparkling Vouvray. Yes. So uh, this is uh, from Domaine Hue. Yes. Uh, probably the most famous uh, domain in the Vouvray region. Uh, and it's based on a Chenin Blanc grape, which is basically associated with the region. That, that's the grape really that uh, uh, the region is famous for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Bubbles. Uh, bubble. Well, uh, uh, this is bubbles, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Chenin Blanc is uh, uh, probably the most versatile grape uh, with Riesling. It, it makes uh, these spectacular, long lived uh, sweet wines, mm -hmm. Moulou. And it, and it makes uh, dry wines of all styles mm -hmm. and off between wines off so you dry. Can, you can make Chenin Blanc kind of as you wish. Well, and sparkling wine, right. like, like we, uh, yeah. uh, in Petillan style, which is uh, uh, this style right here. What is Petillan style? Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, uh, when it's bottled, it's partially fermented. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it's not as. Uh, Aggressive as, as like champagne. Uh -huh. Okay. So, yeah. So it's okay. like it's very interesting. Yeah, actually, uh, that's funny because I was writing on tasting notes and I wrote that it was very light and like mousse like. Yes. Yes, mousse like. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and Vouvray, you know, uh, like like I said, that's a region basically associated with uh, Chenin Blanc. And we have a little map over here on it. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So it's in the Loire Valley. Uh, and, Where's that? Uh, so Loire Valley, it's in like central to to uh, to the it's like from center of france to the west it's like relatively elongated okay uh so you have uh if you could pull the map because the map i think yeah. mirror effects right now so yes yeah yeah so it's reflective <laughs> but here we have uh the atlantic coast nantes uh, portion uh which is muscadet that, that that's the style melon de bourgogne is the great but muscadet comes from this region then when you go kind of in the red that's uh, anjou and samour which are dominated by Cabernet Franc. Then you, you come to Touraine, and uh, Bouray is the most famous uh, region in Touraine. Okay. So it's kind of in the center, and it's right there. It's kind of yellowish, uh, right so it's the city of Bouvray. And then uh, finally, all the way east, is uh, uh, that's where uh, Sancerre is, uh, cent center of wine. So uh, Sancerre is the most famous uh, uh, region there. So that's associated with yeah, something Some might wine. even say they just have an aggressive PR campaign in Sancerre. So. Yeah, yeah. Branch yeah. out, people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Sancerre, Sauvignon Blanc, Bouvray, Chenin Blanc. So two different grapes. Right. And uh, and uh, as I was saying, uh, I think more people are so, uh, so you know are familiar with uh, Sauvignon Blanc because mm -hmm. California makes much more Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc. But but I, I think uh, arguably you could uh, uh, say make an argument that Chenin Blanc is the greater of the two grapes. Mm -hmm. That at its best. It makes much more spectacular wines than Sancerre at its best, and definitely much longer lived. I mean, Sancerre uh, uh, probably a great Sancerre is great up to ten years of age. Okay. But uh, uh, some of these uh, Chenin Blancs uh, taste great after hundred years of age. So wow. Yeah. So so it's it's right there on par with Riesling. Uh, uh, there's not as many spectacular examples worldwide. Of Chenin Blanc as uh, there are with Riesling, mm -hmm. but it's best like uh, the wines of Domaine Hue. It's uh, it's pretty spectacular, okay. and yeah. So so it's uh, uh, the Chenin Blanc capital of the world, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Vouvray. Uh, the the, uh, the wines in that region have been around since ninth century, mm -hmm. and uh, in the fourteenth century, uh, you know, a lot uh, people already knew those vineyards. They okay. were kind of uh, they were set. They were set. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, this estate is 90 years old. It was established in 1928. Yes. I was doing some historical digging. Well, you know what's interesting? I know I, I, I was recently listening to a podcast uh, that Jesse Robinson was on, and it was a debate uh, um, between old world wines and uh, new world wines. Uh -huh. And she took the part of the debate that she was defending old world wines. Uh -huh. And she was uh, um, kind of doing like a wits spar with a gentleman who was defending New World. He was making you know uh, interesting arguments that New World they're, they're more experimental. Mm -hmm. uh, you know they're typically more progressive. Mm -hmm. Where in the old world they're more in the traditional. Right. In, stick with the traditions. Right. But uh, why I brought that up is because uh, doing a little bit of a background research on this. Uh, 
it said that a lot of the uh, the, the monasteries and the monks mm -hmm. basically experimented within the Vouvray mm -hmm. in the Middle Ages. Uh -huh. So they've done their experimenting, yes, yes, yes. already. Yes, so yes. they've done their experience. So they know what it is. Whereas, you know, a lot of California ones, you know, first, second generations, the implication is that's not enough time to uh, f find what's best. Uh, for, for the environment, for the, uh, uh, the, the, the land that you're on. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that, that was a uh, you know, very interesting argument for that. So, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, the really, uh, really interesting. The other thing is uh, uh, a lot of things in Bouvray are made out of tufo, which is a, a, a limestone type of rock. So a lot of the, the, the uh, actual uh, wineries or the cellars are made out of that limestone. Oh, okay. I have a picture of yes. the cellar of the domain. Yes, yeah, yes, actually, pull it up. Yes. Speaking of all the snooping I did. So this is um, this is a, a picture of uh, Domaine Huet's cellar. You know, uh, you've all seen caves before, but it's, it's very beautiful. Yeah, and, and most likely uh, that's too full above the cave. That's that limestone. Okay. And a lot of the uh, uh, Chenin Blanc uh, is, is grown in that, uh, in that soil. Okay. And, and this, this is, is this is from the vineyard uh, from Domaine Huet. Yeah, and, their vineyards, yeah. And Domaine Huet, they own three vineyards: um, La, uh, uh, La Holu, Lamont, and Cos du Borg, and they consider the three best vineyards in in Vouvray. Okay, so this is one of the basically best producers. Yeah, it, it's the most uh, most renowned producer yeah. in in the region. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about a lot of the uh, Chenin Blanc wines is is, is the what they want to do is they want to um, bottle them early mm -hmm. and age them in a bottle for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's actually not a lot of oak used in uh, Vouvray. That's not one of the regions that Cooper just go and, 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 and try to sell themselves to. <laughs> okay, and, and, it's not a cooperage sales location. Yeah, right? no, it's not because uh, uh, the grape is very uh, very high in acid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so so kind of it's not good for for the oak. Mm -hmm. But so it needs to age for some time in the in the bottle mm -hmm. uh, to to kind of tame itself. That's why they make it in different styles. Where they add uh, uh, you know residual sugar, so mm -hmm. uh, th th there's different styles. There's off dry, mm -hmm. and then there's also um, uh, uh, you know like sweet, the super yeah. sweet one. This is so, very balanced. So yeah. I mean, I wrote uh, orange peel, yes, a creamy mousse, very light, um, and it smells lovely. It smells like apricots and wild kind of florally kind of um you know peachy it smells very nice and it tastes very nice um and it's got nice acid balance and you know how i feel about wines with good acid structure yeah, yeah. how they make excellent foodie wines so yes well this you know my, my notes definitely uh, apple oh. and uh, uh honey okay the two things and, and uh, amazing acidity just mm -hmm. like just so refreshing yes it's yeah. very good. Ninety-three points minus, so an excellent, yeah, excellent rating as well. So. Yeah, got a good score. And you know, uh, we always, you know, I don't, we always mention scores. And, and I, I, I think, I think a lot of people don't use scores or or don't know how to like interpret scores. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's yeah. back in your report card days. You wanted something 90 and above and your parents didn't accept yeah. anything less than that. <laughs> well, uh, and you know, uh, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of people when they buy wine, they use like, you know, like pretty label. We, we talked about it in yes. the past. Yes. Uh, Vivino app, that, that's another thing. It's like, oh, uh, what score did this get? Oh, if this, this got like a particular score, that means... Everybody has, uh, you know. Like, Wait, what's like, Vivino for people to know? It's basically the Rotten Tomatoes of wine reviewing. Yeah. So basically, anybody yeah. can submit their opinion. Yeah, you, you, it's an app, and uh, I think it's uh, used uh, for two purposes. You could uh, use it as kind of a collection of the wines you tasted uh -huh. and your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. And then it's also like a combination uh, of when you submit uh, your kind of personal review, it collects it and gives it like an average score. Right. So, so, Which uh, that can be problematic, right? Right? Like, well, I think it's problematic, but, yeah. but I, I think a lot of people use it like, oh, this is, it has a high average score. Uh, that means it's pretty good. That means a lot of people are liking it. Mm. Well, but I, I actually think it's a fundamentally uh, uh, narrow way of finding good wines. I, I think you'll be stuck in tasting kind of similar wines. And, or, or wines that are super easy to find is what it is. Like, super easy to, to find. Uh, maybe to, to me, that's 
produced. Yeah. Well, well, what happens is you have these, mar- uh, in my opinion, these wines are su- super marketed, and I think it influences uh, consumers' thought. Right. And they automatically give it a high score. That's why I don't. Uh, I trust the, uh, the critics. Who, to me, you know, there's there's uh, you know quite a few critics out there. You know, Maybe ten, mm-hmm. not like you know hundreds <laughs> or millions, but at least critics who have like a like a following or have magazines and, and, and stuff like that, and uh, you know they taste a lot of wines. Uh, and it's their uh, profession. Yeah, yeah, so they have a perspective. Yeah, uh, I don't think a, a, a consumer, who, casual consumer, has the same perspective. That's just. And it, it's all opinion. Like you know, nobody's claiming that the professionals are, are giving you facts. Right. Uh, but I, I think. Uh, um, they're uh, kind of judging the Jews, uh-huh. and uh, they're not getting paid by the wineries. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, there's nobody's paying them. You know, advertising. The whole purpose is for you to buy the bottle. So they're doing everything right. you get to buy the bottle. When they make pretty label, oh, oh, they want to make, make a pretty label so you'll buy the bottle. Right. right? Except for they have some of the big box retailers have a fake in-house wine critic yeah. who gives extremely high yeah. ratings. And I'm like, yeah. wow, shocking. I, I mean, Somebody... to, me, to me, it's a conflict of interest. You know, yeah. I, I do more recommendations, but I don't have like I don't have a like personal. A fake, yeah. We don't own any of these wineries, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no, we don't. And, and, and you know, like. I I have my personal recommendations, but we don't have like like you said a fake system where we promote the wines that we sell like <laughs> based on the yeah. Well, I yeah. think these wines are this wine in particular, and a lot of wines we have are so good they sell themselves. You know, if you taste them and try them, and uh, you know, understand that they're highly rated and hard to find, I think they and, sell themselves. Ninety three points for a, a, a sparkling uh, wine is a great score. Yeah. Uh, so we sell it for thirty four dollars. And sparkling wines, for the most part, uh, they're like a step up in price point, mm-hmm. uh, but not as uh, uh, expensive as champagne. No. So this is uh, this is actually a fantastic alternative it's very to champagne. Good. Yeah. A- and uh, just to give you a perspective, ninety-three point champagne. We're talking about probably seventy-five and above yep. price point. Yep. So th- so that's why it's, it's really that's why you need the perspective. So you know, thirty-three dollars is not a two buck chuck price point, but when you're comparing it. To a high quality champagne of the same quality, it's have the price right, and so it's, it's and it's yeah. uh, you know excellent quality. So. It's, it's fantastic. That, ninety-three points. That yeah. that's yeah. what ninety-three point means. It's, it means it's a fantastic sparkling wine. Yeah, and, and it tastes that way. You know, yes. a great acidity. Uh, I mean, you know, we had sushi earlier. This probably would have been a, a great pairing. For I know. It. Why didn't we open it earlier? <laughs> Well, we wanted to taste for the show, but but yeah, you know, uh, this is like a, a fun wine. Um, I mean, I, I wrote down uh, it would go great with creamy sauces. I, I know you were mentioning your own uh, pairings for this. No, actually, I wasn't, um, but I do think creamy sauces would go great because yeah. um, you know it's it's got that nice acid structure. Um, but I don't really have too much uh, too much of a food recommendation. I didn't I didn't spend too much time thinking about it. Well, you know, the, the one th- thing is uh, part of what makes it great is to buy a dynamic estate. Oh, it so is? They, so they started oh. practicing early. So biodynamics means, you know, everything's organic. They're trying to keep the earth uh, healthy. Actually, they're following like the lunar cycles. It's, it's really dedication to, to keeping the, the vines healthy. healthy right? And, and the, with the thought process, if the vines are healthy, they'll produce gr- great wines. Right. And, and uh, so, so that's kind of their, their philosophy. They were one of the very few first estates in Bouvray to follow that philosophy. And I think it shows in their wines and all the high scoring wines that they have, you know, because we, uh, we, we were uh, oh, yeah, you have trying the sparkling wines. Yeah, but right, this, so this is an excellent producer and they've got some other good Yeah. Stuff. So here you, you see, this is from their Lamont Vineyard. Well, like I said, uh, this is, uh, they have three of the the premier vineyards in Vouvray mm-hmm. and this is a demi-sec so demi-sec means off dry After, yeah. yeah so it's, so it's like slightly sweeter sweeter and then they have um, this is also from Lamont Vineyard but it's a Moulou style and that's the sweet wine so this is the one uh, this is the wine that could go a long long time we were talking about easily 30 years uh, 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 in, in like Jess has mentioned in her article, uh, some of them, she tasted some of them 100 years old and they still had the brightness of fruit and, and great acidity to be tasting great at 100 years old. So it's, mm-hmm. it, it, it's very spectacular. And the, the only uh, cool thing about that uh, is um, it's owned by a, uh, an American uh, businessman. Oh, yeah. He, he bought it out. So he, he was started by Victor Hue. Yes, so, yeah. And then his um, son helped him run it for a while, too. Yeah, son in law, Gaston. So, Gaston, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and then, uh, I guess, uh, an American 
yeah. he bought it out? Or Maybe or like kind of... uh, 12 years ago or something like that. Okay, yeah. And so yeah. Uh, he's kind of involved now as well. Yeah. And he, he So before he bought Domain Huawei, he actually, uh, he, this uh, Kiran Dwar, which is a famous uh, winery in Hungary, in Tokai. Okay. Also made uh, for Furman Grave, which is probably equivalent uh, to Chenin Blanc because it makes... Uh, uh, you know this uh, sweet elixirs, uh-huh. which in uh, 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 during the Austro-Hungarian Empire were the most famous wines on earth. Okay, all the royalties used to drink those yes, wines. Yes, yes, okay. And now uh, this Furman, this is a dry wine that they make. So uh, the businessman owns both of these. So estates. he has good taste. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he made uh, two. You know, the best estate in uh, Hungary and the best estate in the region. And makes uh, you know these spectacular wines. So, uh, like I said, this is the wines that we carry, and, and uh, they are uh, you, uh, they're you know as, as good of wines and wine wines as there are in the world. And for example, the the Furment, this is for twenty five dollars. This is just a fantastic wine. Yeah, I mean, I mean this is yeah. a special wine. At you, the when you taste wine. it, you're like, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, California wines don't come it's, in this quality. So memorable. Yes. Yeah. So un, you know, unlike anything else. And actually, uh, for for our anniversary, we had the sparkling wine yes. uh, from that producer, mm-hmm. which was also fantastic. It, it, it was it was very it was like a rich mousse mm-hmm. and, and very distinctive. It, it, uh, I remember like a lot of like grainy apple character in it. It's just it's just uh, these type of uh, uh, tasting notes. California just can't replicate. So, so if you want to uh, find out like the richness of the different wines in the world, it's a, this, these are the great places to start among many, many others. It's just, just because, you know, as the things we mentioned, you know, the soils, uh, the climates, mm-hmm. uh, the, the locations that come for, from, the, the, the history of vinification, mm-hmm. it just makes wines that in many aspects, California just replicate. It can't replicate whether they're good, bad, or, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. It, it's just... If you're kind of stuck in that California drinking mode, you're selling yourself short. I would definitely say recommend to to venture out, and I think you'll be drinking the best wines in the world. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I think so too. Maybe biased though. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, check us out next Friday at nine thirty p.m. We'll be doing another tasting review. Thank All you, right, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.